Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to have another episode of Hey eBuzz. This one is from a viewer who disliked a statement that I made on the Amarok video I did a couple weeks ago. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the videos and you like what the channel's doing, you can buy us a cup of coffee. Or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Hey, eBuzz, freedom sucks. Well, that's kind of what I get from it, but I could be wrong, and when I get done with this, if you've got a different view on what we're going to talk about today, please leave a comment below. I'm going to open up the video. I did a video a couple weeks ago on Amarok Linux. Great distribution, but what they did is they customized the GNOME desktop, okay? They took away the complete overlay for applications. They kind of gave you one panel down at the bottom. They gave you the option to either window the open tabs or you could tile them. I thought it was really impressive and I really liked it. And I basically stated when I made the video, this is the way GNOME should be. Boy, did I open up a can of worms with that statement. Let me go ahead and pause this and we're going to switch on over to the comments. Okay, here's the first comment. So you think turning GNOME into Windows is the way to go, LOL? Okay, time out. Right off the bat, I never said we need to turn GNOME into Windows. Okay? We've got to understand that a desktop environment or the way a desktop environment looks doesn't make it Windows. GNOME is for people who want to be productive in a modern desktop environment. Okay? I never said they couldn't be productive in a... Modern desktop environment, all I said was in Amarok, the way they added the tiling and windowing feature, brought it down to one panel, simplified the whole GNOME experience, that it seemed easy and it should be the way GNOME is. KDE and what you put together there is for people who want to follow the old Windows desktop paradigm. It's quite silly, really. Nobody's saying anything about the old Windows desktop paradigm. What I was speaking of was ease of use, was making things a little more simple for people that might be leaving Windows or Mac OS and coming to Linux. It makes things a little easier. And it's not silly. It's quite silly, really. Getting people to leave Windows and come to Linux, there's nothing silly about that. If we can adjust something or recreate something that's out there, to bring more people to this beautiful operating systems that we have, no matter what desktop environment they come to, whether it be KDE, GNOME, old school GNOME, XFCE, LXQT, or they come for a window tiling manager. None of it's silly. I don't understand that. My response was, no, actually it's called freedom. Freedom to do and create whatever you want in an environment that is open. That is the heart and soul of Linux. Thank you for the comment, and thank you for watching the video. I try to speak to all of you when you send comments. I try to reach out. Thank you for your input. I don't down anybody. I just try to be open and honest. He comes back with, yes, that is a great thing about GNOME. You can customize it exactly the way you want with the extension plugins. Time out. If you're getting somebody that's leaving Windows or Mac and want to come over to Linux and they choose GNOME as a desktop environment, they have no clue or idea about extensions or plugins. Zero, zip, nada. They're coming over blind. What I was stating in the Amarok video was they can step right out, step right in, and not miss a beat. Now, as they use it, if they want to experience GNOME in a different way, they can move on to a different distribution. But getting them to step out of Windows and something into, like, Amarok with the tiling option and the windowing option and the tweaked GNOME desktop environment, I thought was kind of awesome. However, the default GNOME should not be anywhere near classical window desktop experience. It's not. I know Windows users crave the familiarity of classic Windows, but it is not the modern nor best way to go. Okay, time out. Windows users crave the familiarity of classic Windows, but it is not the modern nor the best way to go. Tell me that isn't a Steve Jobs or Bill Gates statement right there. Right out of the box. You're going to use what we tell you to use, and this is the way you're going to do it because that's the only way to go. That statement hits me kind of the wrong way. Today, we need a user interface that is powerful, elegant, and supports various input methods and screen sizes. By the end of the day, all you need is a quick way to find applications and manage them. 
Modern GNOME is exactly that with its super simple shell overlay and search functionality. Welcome to the future. Uh, you obviously love GNOME. Uh, that's awesome. But the way you're saying it is, you take GNOME the way it is, point blank period, it's the only way to go. And that's wrong. That's, that's really wrong. That is like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs saying, you don't know what you want till we tell you what you want. I came back. I understand exactly where you're coming from, but you're also saying that there shouldn't be the freedom to do that. That's one of the reasons we use Linux is for the freedom to make it look however we want. If your desktop works for you and you love GNOME, that is awesome. But if somebody that's finally leaving Windows wants to be more comfortable in an environment and we can help move them to Linux, isn't that important too? Isn't that the future? Leaving Windows behind? And a few things get clarified here. I don't think you do, and you misunderstood my response. I said yes, that referring to the freedom you just spoke of, is the great thing about GNOME. You can customize it exactly the way you want with extension plugins, which new users have no idea how to use. So yes, as a longtime proponent of open source, I'm all about freedom of choice. However, default GNOME is not the desktop to lure in old school Windows users. For that, we have KDE, which is exactly more or less a Windows user interface. Really? No, it's not. KDE is the most customizable desktop environment out there. Point blank, period. You can make it look like anything you want it to look like, but it is not a Windows user interface. Modern GNOME is about being productive in a modern setting on a desktop computer, laptop, and tablet. Everybody that watches my videos knows that I'm not a fan of GNOME, but I don't bash it, okay? But using GNOME slows me down. I'm on a laptop. I'm not on a tablet, okay? I don't need the whole screen to fill up with buttons for me to push to open up an application. But here's what's great about it, guys. That's my personal choice. I don't like it. For those of you out there that are watching this video that use GNOME, it works for you. That's the great part of everything, is that no matter what distribution we're using, it works for us. So why bash some other distribution that's making tweaks to GNOME, and I put it out an opinion, this is the way GNOME should be. You don't have to bash it. You can just say, hey, love the video, don't like the way they tweak GNOME. This version of GNOME that I'm using is much better in its future. There you go. You don't have to dictate to us the reason that we should have to stick with the way GNOME comes out of the box because that's not the way we are. That's not Linux. Sure, you can use plugins and extensions, but 90% of the people coming from Windows to Linux have no clue about the plugins or extensions. If you read the GNOME Human Interface Guide, you will realize that GNOME tries hard to make things simple as opposed to Windows, which provides a complex user interface. Complex user interface. Okay, hold on. That's why I have Windows open right now. What is complex about Windows? Honestly, what is complex about Windows? I hate being in this operating system, but I had to just for these comments today. What's complex? If we hit this button, does the screen load up? How is that complex? And if you want to look at all your apps, how is that complex? That's not complex, guys. You know, if you want to get technical, if you take KDE... It, 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 they, have, they have ripped off KDE. I love how people will say KDE looks just like Windows. Really? Wonder why? Because Windows has been stealing things from KDE for years. You click over here. This is complex. There you go. There's all your applications. There's nothing complex about the Windows user interface. What's complex and why people leave Windows is for all the crap data theft, is for all the telemetry, is for all the spying, and it's for all the other crap that comes embedded into it, and it's proprietary junk. It's proprietary garbage. That's why we leave Windows. We're tired of that. We want our freedom, okay? So let's go back over here. I'll be glad to shut Windows off. There's nothing complex about the Windows user interface. It is two very different design paradigms. In the end, I believe that majority of the people will enjoy the GNOME user experience more. It is only the old folks that will resist and stick to the Windows experience. Well, I'm not that old, obviously, and a lot of my viewers and subscribers aren't old. There are some that are old, but based on the demographics that I get, 70% of my viewers are between 28 and 50, and that's not old. We just like an easy user experience. We don't want to have to click two or three different buttons or go up into the corner to open up to look at our apps. It's just a pain in the butt. Your suggestion of making GNOME like Windows is a terrible idea. Never said that. Never said that at all. I said the way GNOME should be. That's an opinion. 
I didn't stand on a, a soapbox and sit there and go, hey guys, this is where you need to change it. What I'm saying is, how come? Just, just hear me out here. You've got GNOME, right? How come you can't have an experienced version and a new user version? Just a thought. I think you'd get a lot more people to give it a shot. If you are using GNOME and you love it, leave a comment below. I'm not here. This is not to bash GNOME. Please hear me out. This isn't to bash GNOME. What I'm saying is we have so many awesome distributions, so many desktop environments. All I said is the way that GNOME should be on the Amarok version because I think that would be real user-friendly. And I get in return that this is a complicated user interface. Windows is crap. It's not complicated. Okay? And let me go back over here. And then we will end up with both KDE and GNOME offering a Windows experience while none of them will look to the future to captivate the future audience. Look to the future. It's an operating system. We turn it on. We do tasks. We're not trying to captivate anybody. That sounds like something Steve Jobs would say. Then we will end up with both KDE and GNOME offering a Windows experience while none of them will look to the future to captivate the future audiences. Sounds like an Apple commercial. We're not here to captivate. What we are here is to get people to leave Windows, leave Mac, come to the freedom of Linux, and help build this community and make it bigger and make it more mainstream. That's the goal. I'm not here to argue with anybody. I'm not here to make anybody mad. You know, GNOME, great desktop environment. Not for me, but people that are watching right now that are using it, it's for them. It just comes back to that all about freedom, paradigms and paradigm shifts and things like that don't really matter at the end of the day. If you turn it on and it works for you, use it, whether it be Windows, whether it be Mac, whether it be Linux. I just ask you, if you, you care about your freedom, you care about your data protection, you care about privacy, come check Linux out. I appreciate all the comments from my viewers. And if you disagree with me, agree with me, throw it down in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the video, like what the channel's doing, you can buy us a cup of coffee. Or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.